Hi again everyone, Dr. Tom McNamara back for our course in trigonometry. In this video we're going to continue working with the law of sines and you'll remember that gives us a tool for solving triangles, not necessarily right triangles, it works on any kind of triangle. But we are going to look at two uh, what I'll call unusual cases. Uh, firstly is the case of no solution, we've actually already seen some examples of that. And the second is something called the ambiguous case, and then we'll look at an example where we try to figure out what's happening. Do we have a solution or do we have the ambiguous case? So let's just jump right in and look at an example, which I will pull out of our textbook here. the missing parts in triangle A, B, C if angle A equals 35 degrees, side A equals 4 centimeters, and side B equals 12 centimeters. Okay, so we've been given one of the angles and two sides. So I'm going to make use of the law of sines to get started here. And sure you know this already, but just a reminder, uh, one of the things the law of sines says is this, sine of angle A over side A is equal to sine of angle B over side B. All right, if that's true, we can solve for sine B by multiplying both sides by B to clear out this denominator here. So you'd have b times sine a over a. So let's go ahead and fill in all the known quantities. We've got a 12 for the length of b, 35 degrees is the measure of angle a, and then down here we have a 4. All right. Now 35 degrees is not a special angle, so I'll need my calculator help me with the computation, so 12 times sine 35 equals, divide by 4 equals. And here I'm seeing this is approximately 1.72. And at this point, I can confidently say that we are in this case. There is no such triangle, and the reason is Whenever I take the sine of an angle, well, go, go all the way back to the definition of sine in the right triangle sense. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is by definition the longest side in the triangle. So you're making a fraction where the denominator has to be bigger than the numerator, so the sine of an angle can never be bigger than 1. So this is a problem right here. So if you run into this scenario, we know we're in the case of no solution. And if you try to take inverse sine of this, your calculator will give you an error message, okay? So basically what's happening here is this. Let me draw you a little picture. Let's put angle A over here. We were told that angle A was 35 degrees. This is side B over here. We were told side B is 12 centimeters. And what's happening is side A is 4 centimeters, but given this angle and this length, that is not enough. So no matter where I were to put that leg, it's not going to connect to the base anywhere. All right, now let me show you a slightly different scenario here. Let's say we had this where my leg length was like that. So I'm given one of these angles and it's fixed. Okay, well, 
how do I know whether I have this triangle or this triangle? Okay, so that's a situation where we're dealing with the ambiguous case. So let me show you an example where we work on that. Okay. Uh, so once again, pulling one from the book. Find the missing parts in triangle A, B, C if a is 7.5, B equals 12, and C equals 35. Whoop, sorry. Angle A equals 35 degrees. Okay, so once again, we are given two side lengths and one angle. And uh, notice there's quite a bit of similarity to the example we just did. Okay, so once again, law of sines. Sine A over A equals sine B over B. As before, we will solve for sine B to help us make some progress by finding an unknown angle. Now, let me do some number crunching with these values. So, 12 times sine 35 degrees over 7.5. Okay, so 12 times sine 35 divide by 7.5. So I'm getting approximately 0 0.9177. So B would be sine inverse of 0.9177. If you have this type of calculator, you can do uh, sine inverse and then answer. And it'll take the sine inverse of the answer it just gave you. Okay, so this is approximately 66.6 .6 degrees. Okay, now remember, the inverse sign will give you an output value that is between minus 90 and 90. Okay, so if we're dealing with a triangle like this, it'll basically always be between 0 and 90. Okay, so it's always going to give you an acute angle. But what about the possibility of having an obtuse angle? We should consider that as well. Okay, so let me go and do the computation for that. So we'll do 180 minus 66.6 .6 degrees, 113.4 degrees. Now I need to make sure that this is compatible with angle A. All right, so. One hundred thirteen point four plus thirty-five. That is still less than one hundred eighty. So in other words, I still have room for a, an angle C. If this were the case, so I can't tell is this the, this the angle or is this the angle. So I'm going to actually construct two triangles that fit the criteria that we were given at the beginning. Okay, so case one, B equals 66.6 .6 degrees. So we got A, we got B. Uh, let's see, now we will figure out uh, values for um, angle C. So case one, that's B. Let's find angle C. Angle C would be 
180 minus 35 plus 66.6. Okay, we already know two of the angles, so we can figure out the third. Okay, so 180 minus 35 plus 66.6 equals, so C would be 78.4 degrees. And from here, we can use the law of sines again to figure out the length of side C. So we know that A over sine A equals C over sine C. So that would imply C equals A times sine C over sine A. I know I usually write these with the signs up top, but of course if sine A over A is equal to sine C over C, and I take the reciprocal of both sides, I've done the same thing to both sides, so I still have equality. This makes it a little easier to solve for one of the side lengths. Okay, now we were given information in the beginning of the problem about side A, it was 7.5. We just found C, that's 78.4 degrees over the sine of angle A, 35 degrees. We were given that in the beginning of the problem as well. Do some number crunching. 7.5 times sine 35 over sine 78.4. So I'm getting approximately 4.4. Okay, so this is one solution. The remaining parts, B equals 66.6 degrees, that would make angle C 78.4, and side C equal to 4.4. Now we do have another possibility. Case 2 is that angle B was 113.4 degrees. So let's consider that case. We're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to find angle C using some arithmetic. All right, let me do some number crunching here. 180 minus, open up parenthesis, 35 plus 113.4, close parenthesis. So C is 31.6 degrees. And now we will once again use the law of sines. To find the length of side C. Fill in all known quantities. A was 7.5, given to us in the statement of the problem. Measure of angle C, 31.6, we just found it. Measure of angle A, 35 degrees from the statement of the problem. So once again, number crunching, 7.5 times sine 31.6, close that parenthesis, equals, divide that by sine 35, equals, so I'm getting approximately 6.9. Okay, so this is the second triangle that meets the conditions that we were given at the beginning, which was angle A is 35 degrees, side B is 12, side A is 7.5. The first case was when angle B was 66.6 .6 degrees, and then we got values for side C and angle C. The second case is when B is 113.4 degrees, and then you get this information, angle C is 31.6, side C is 6.9. So, the question naturally arises, how do I know when I'm in that case? How do I know that I need to do this? And, well, let me give you an example. I'll, I'll go through one where we don't know ahead of time, are we in the ambiguous case or not? So, here's my example.
Find the missing parts. of triangle ABC if, and what do I want to do here? Okay, let's do this one. A is 42, angle A is 42 degrees, side A is 52 centimeters, and side B is 64 centimeters. Okay, so we're going to start out by finding the measure of angle B using the law of sines. So once again, we're back to this. Sine A over side A equals sine B over side B. Solve it for sine B. Multiply that over. Fill in the known quantities. B was 64. Angle A was 42 degrees. So my numerator is 64 times sine 42 degrees. Downstairs we have the length A, which is 52. Let's do some number crunching here. 64 times sine 42 equals. Divide by 52 equals. All right, so I'm getting approximately 8 point, sorry, not 8 point, point eight two three. 5.8235. So we can find angle B, B would be sine inverse of that. So okay, so now this is saying that Angle B is 55.4 degrees. Okay, so the question I really want to answer is, do I need to consider a second case or not? And what we should do is look at the supplement. So do we need two cases? supplement of angle B. Now remember your kind of vocab here. Two angles that add up to 90 degrees are complementary. Two angles that add up to 180 degrees, those are supplementary. All right, so I'm going to do 180 minus 55.4. Let me see what that gives me. 180 minus 55.4. I'm getting 124.6. Okay, so now the question is, given the measure of angle A, could we have an angle in here with this measurement? How much of the 180 degrees angle sum have we consumed? Okay, obviously if we do these two, these two add to 97.4, we still have something left for angle C. But what about this? Okay, well, let's just add the two of these. So 124.6 degrees plus 42 degrees. So I'm getting 168.6 degrees. So the answer to this, do we need two cases? The answer is yes, you need two cases. Okay, so uh, there are tables in your textbook that'll kind of lay this out, but to be honest, this is the way I remember it. I get one of my angles, I'm like, okay, that gives me the obtuse possibility, or sorry, that gives me the acute angle possibility, 
look at the supplement and see if this will work in your triangle. Now, if this were too big, if we were getting something over 180, then we wouldn't even bother with a second case. And of course, we can do the two cases exactly as we did in the previous example. Firstly, we assume B is this. We're given angle A in the problem, so then we find angle C, use the law of sines to find the remaining side. And then we do it again with that value for B. That will give us a different value for angle C. Go to the law of sines to get the length of side C.